Hi. This is going to be interesting. Me without use of my hands. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is um, it's interesting. Just as I said that this thing is coming through my head, you know, what do you really want to talk about here today? And as I was putting together my notes, I, uh, I was thinking to myself, how do people deal with change? I mean, how, I asked this last week, you know, how do we really deal with change? I know how we're supposed to deal with change, but how do we deal with change? You know, it's easy to fall into this science in such a way that all of a sudden we are clear on how we're supposed to be acting. We're clear on how we're supposed to respond, but is that really what's going on inside? And I was reading, uh, I've been reading the uh, autobiography of a yogi for the last couple of months. I read a little bit every morning. And there was a, a little passage this morning about conscious mind and subconscious mind, and then the super conscious mind. And how many of you know the difference between those three? Okay, so, so most of you don't. That's good, it'll be interesting to you then. So, conscious mind, of course, is when I'm wide awake and I'm consciously thinking what I'm thinking. So my subconscious mind is the repository of everything I've ever thought, of everything that's ever been thought. It's all in there in subconscious mind. It's where all of my beliefs are. It's where all my memories are. And subconscious mind really does kind of run the show very often. But what we learn in the science of mind is that Trained thought is far more powerful than untrained thought, and conscious thought is much more powerful than subconscious or unconscious thought. But we must be conscious to understand it. But then there's the superconscious, the superconsciousness, and that is that part of you that knows what it needs to know at all times. That part of you that is linked with, one with, the divine mind that is ever present all intelligence, all wise, and it's what you are. It's underneath everything that we do in the relative world because the subconscious mind is the relative world in form in my mind. And conscious mind is also in the relative world because I'm thinking right now in this relative world, but the superconscious mind. So I was thinking about change and I thought, well, what's it like in the superconscious mind? I know how I react consciously. You know, when Karen first told me that she would be moving on, my, con my conscious mind wasn't, oh, that is so blessed. I'm so, I'm so happy for you. And even though I know I said that, you had to have felt the rest of me because I, I know that my legs started going, hmm, okay. Anybody do that? It's like, no, I'm really good. I have one hand free here. So, so I understand the difference between conscious mind and subconscious mind, but I also know that my conscious mind, whatever it's thinking, is giving more fodder to subconscious mind to create my next day, my next moment. Because whatever I'm thinking right now creates whatever's going to happen to me next. But the superconscious, the oversoul, as Emerson calls it, that thing, did you, just, did you understand that, Joe? Joe just went, I knew it was the oversoul. <laughs> the oversoul, you did well in the Emerson class. The oversoul, however, doesn't react to any of it. And that's where I want to start my talk. The title of my talk is How Full is Full. But first I want to start with defining nothing. So she just sang, here goes nothing. And it is a, a bit of a catchphrase, you know, oh, here goes nothing. But what does that mean? So I want to start by defining nothing. And I want to, nothing, not nothing, nothing. I'll do that in Philly. Um, what does the word nothing mean? And I do want you to yell it out. If you, what do you think the word nothing means? No thing. no thing. Who said that? Very good. Ray Frisbee. No thing. That's very, that's very correct. And by the way, that's what the dictionary says. No thing. Nothing. What else does it mean? Zero. What else? A beginning. Absence. The absence. Okay. What else? Anything? What? Emptiness. The unmanifest, no meaning. So what I came up with which is that which is not, no thing, that which is not, yet, nothing, that which is not. 
So, so Karen was singing, here goes that which is not. Probably wouldn't have sounded as well. <laughs> here goes that which is not. I'm taking a chance. Right. Doesn't work. So that which is not. So nothing. So the nothingness, by the way, is the superconscious. That's what the superconsciousness is. It's this void of nothingness. It doesn't have to be anything. It doesn't have to become anything. It just is. So the nothingness is who you truly, truly are. The nothingness inside of you is the allness that shows up outside of you. That's the nothingness. And it's so funny, I was also reading about how do you describe um, life? What's the definition of life? And somebody, and I can't remember who it was, I think it maybe had been Victor Hugo, who said, um, it's so funny. In the very fact that we have to define life shows that life is undefinable. Did y'all get that? So if we have to define it, it shows that it shows up undefinable. Like the nothingness that you are, that I am. There is a nothingness inside of all of us that is not trying to be anything. How many of you still struggle with trying to be something? Trying to accomplish something. Thank you, Martha, for raising your hand. Right? Trying to be successful. Trying to have more money. Trying to be more talented. Trying to da 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 da. Right? And yet the nothingness from which we come doesn't try to be anything. It just gives us the opportunity to create whatever we want out of it. So that's the super consciousness that you have. And you can tap into at any given moment. I do it by saying, what do I need to know here? What do I need to know here? I close my eyes sometimes and I just say, what do I need to know here? And I certainly did that when Karen let me know that she would be moving on. And, and the irony, of course, is that Reverend Rita called me to tell me that she had just found out that her music team was going to be moving on today. And she said, you know, I'd love for you to just talk me through this. I went, well, I'd love you to talk me through this too. <laughs> and we both just laughed that on the exact same day, we would be turning over a new idea for music. <laughs> really? I can have palm trees brought in. <laughs> Rita, did you hear that, Rita? She's coming to Kauai. <laughs> did you talk to your husband? No. <laughs> he's saying yes. Yeah, he's good. So, so this nothingness in our superconscious is really our opportunity to tap into a judgeless, impersonal, yet all-powerful energy. Because there is the perfect answer, and there is the perfect design for you, and it is in the nothingness. And it's not that you have to go out there and create it and figure it out and get your purpose, my purpose, my purpose. Honestly, my purpose has strangled me to death for many years. I no longer think about my purpose. My purpose is to enjoy life. Now, what's that going to mean? What's it going to look like? And that's what Troward says, by the way. That's what Thomas Troward teaches. The only purpose in life is to enjoy it. And that's the one thing most people fail at because they're too busy finding purpose for their life. So this nothingness. So the title of my talk is How Full is Full. So I came up with that title um, right around Thanksgiving Day because I was pretty full. Anybody get a full on Thanksgiving Day? Only your husband, Karen. Nobody else ate a lot? Who ate a lot on Thanksgiving Day? Come on. I saw some of those pictures. So, but, but the theme for the month is great full, full of greatness. And I started to ask myself, how great can I possibly be? How full of greatness can I possibly be? Is there a limit to how great I can be? Is there a limit to how great any of us can be? Now, we all know the answer is no then why do we make decisions that stop our greatness? If we know the answer is no, why do we think there are limitations? How many of you will admit, and I do want hands, how many of you will admit that you have literally posted limitations in your mind in certain things? We've all done it. Bless you. <laughs> Did you have to bless? That was so, so Im immense, that question. It's like, oh, chew, God. So, so 
we do. We create limitations. So when it came to full, full means containing as much as something will hold. To be full, it means that it contains as much as something will hold. So for us, metaphysically speaking, in terms of our greatness, there is no such thing as too full. We can never be too full of greatness. We just can never be too full because greatness is a constant evolution. So I was thinking about this, and I was thinking about a glass of water. So here's my glass of water, right? And they, they do this every week for me. Thank you so much, Preciosa. And they fill this. Now, if they were to fill this up, what would happen to this cup? It would overflow. But does that mean that the cup, that it's, it's too full? Or does it just mean that what is within the cup has found a bigger container? The cup's full. It's not too full. The cup stays full. The cup stays full to base, based on what the cup is. And now the floor is the new container. Think about it. And if the water kept running, the room would be the full container until it burst out of this room and suddenly the grounds would now be the new container. But would it be too full? No. The room would be as full as it is. The cup would stay as full as it is. And now the grounds would give room for more. And then if for some reason we were absolutely able to flood Studio City, <laughs> Studio City would burst into Valley Village and Sherman Oaks adjacent. <laughs> and then Sherman Oaks. <laughs> and it would just go on and on and on that way. Would anything really be too full? No. It is impossible to be too full. The cup is full, not too full. This building's full, not too full. The grounds are full. Studio City's full. Sherman Oaks is full. And it just keeps going and going and going. So how full is full? Well, unfortunately, it's based on how big is your container. We have this belief that we have limitations based on the containers we have created in our minds. The container of money. I can only have this much money because this is my job. This is what that job pays. I can only have this much success because after all, I'm 62 years old. How much success can a 62-year-old minister, ex-actor actually have? Exactly. <laughs> so we create these, these containers, these cups, for all the things that we decide can only get full so far. And then we're afraid when it absolutely spills over. The Reverend Karen Mitchell is that which has spilled over in my cup because she needed to find a bigger place in her mind and in her soul to be her full cup. Now, I can spend my time mourning what has just left my cup, but then I ignore the fact that my cup is still full. We keep thinking somehow when it overflows, we've lost something. No, we don't lose anything. We lose nothing but a relationship type of thing. But what you really gain is the observation that you can never, ever, ever be diminished by anything that happens in your life. Only if you buy into some container that is going to hold you in that place. So I really want you to think about your life and think about what type of container are you living in? Are you living in a container of a fixed income and don't want that? Are you living in a container of being single and you keep looking for your soulmate? Are you living in a container of, of a job that you don't like and that container is killing you, but you're gonna stay in it because you don't know what's gonna happen if you fly over the side of that container and you may land up on the floor of Studio City <laughs> So there's this quote that I pulled out, and it's uh, from the amazing Reverend Rita Andriello. And she wrote this today in her blog. If I am only here for a certain period of time, and that time gets shorter as I grow older, I have to ask, am I taking delight in my life? Not because of all the things I'm doing or experiencing, but how am I relishing the moments of being present and really being here, not in the future, 
with worry or in the past with regret, but here, right now. The question she asked, am I taking delight in life, is a real important question to ask yourself. Are you taking delight in how full your life really is? Or are you spending more time trying to figure out what's missing? Because I'm here to tell you, nothing's missing. Even if you think it is, nothing is missing. It is all there. It is absolutely all there. The success, all the success you want, it is in the superconscious of nothingness. All of the financial success you want, it's all right there in that superconscious of nothingness. All of the love, all of the sex, all of the greatness that life has to offer, everything you could possibly want is right here, right now, fully present in the superconsciousness, that which is the nothingness, the allness. And it's time for us to di- literally do a bypass from the subconscious and the conscious to the superconscious to make that paradigm shift, to make that jump, to make that move, as Karen is doing, to that place where you stop coming from a limited point of view. Stop coming from a cup that may be full, but it's still limiting you. The only time we can contemplate full in a single moment is in that single moment. So I'm asking you tonight to really look at your life and ask yourself, how full is my life? And where are the boundaries that you've put up? So there is that within each one of us that is an endless wellspring of possibility. And we talk about this, the possibility, the pure potentiality that that, that Emerson talks about. But this, you know, laying in my bed this morning and reading this book, um, I have a quote quote from the book that I want to read you. I was looking for quotes I always like to find fun quotes for my talks. <laughs> and as I'm looking, thinking about the, the, these quotes, and I'm reading the book, the, the, the uh, Autobiography of Yogi, and here's what I read in the book, and I was like, unbelievable, I am being called out by a book that was written years ago. Here it is. Quotations there have been in superabundance, but what original commentary can you supply <clears throat> from the uniqueness of your particular life? What holy text have you absorbed and made your own? In what ways have these timeless truths renovated your nature? Are you content to be a hollow Victrola, mechanically repeating the words of other men? (laughs) Or will you speak your own? I don't have any quotes for you tonight. (laughs) Other than the one from Reverend Rita. And when I read this, I was like, oh my God, this is, I wish I could actually just sit here and have a conversation with all of you individually. I mean, I feel like I'm doing that anyway. And I know many of you come up to me at the end and go, my God, you were talking just to me. And and I am, I, I truly am, because I'm talking from my heart and there's only one heart. So really we're all in this conversation together. So To conclude all of this would be, as Karen said, a mammoth trick. To come up with an ending, because you know I always have my, I teach my ministerial students, there's the one, two, three of giving a talk. Number one, you start with what your message is. Number two, you embellish it, you figure it out, you, 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 you support it. And number three, you, you close it out. And I'm actually just, you know, I'm on number three. But when I got to number three today and I was working on this, I was, I was, I was stymied. I was like, wow, I don't want to close it out. I actually want to leave it open. I don't want to give an answer. I actually want you to live the question. I don't want to make sense out of this. I want you to tap into the superconscious of your mind and find the sense in it. Because to talk about nothingness is a little cerebral. It truly is. And to talk about, you know, fullness, what is full, a little bit cerebral as well. And trying to put those pieces together and make sense out of it can be a little difficult. And yet I'm so clear on what it means. For me, it means that I have got to be willing 
to allow change to move through me in such an easygoing manner that I see what there is to see. And I don't get stuck in the uncomfortableness of change, but in the comfort of that super conscious flow. Easier said than done sometimes, but a noble cause to go after. So I will close by saying this to you. There is something inside of you that is you. The super consciousness of you. The wisdom of you. The, the, the truth of you. The authenticity of you. And it is not encumbered by anything you have ever done. It has never been tapped into or, or touched or taken away from. Nothing you have ever done or ever not accomplished has done anything to this pureness that you are. And you can never, ever use all of it, ever. Because once you are full and are using all of it, there's just more coming up from the bottom. So as you go through this week, and I do love our new time. I love that it's the end of the week for me, the end of a Sunday. And I get to step into Monday morning with this. As you step into this week coming forward, my gift to you and my, 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 my wish for you is that you hear these words, nothingness, fullness, super consciousness, and you just allow those thoughts, those ideas to live you this week. And most importantly, to continually ask yourself, is there a cup here that I'm trying to live in? Is there a box that I'm trying to stay in? Are there walls that I have created that I know are not my walls? Because if you live those questions, I guarantee you, and then allow the super consciousness to answer it, not your logical mind, to say, what do I need to know about that? You wait and see. You will be able to get up here and sing, here goes nothing, and know what you're talking about. Namaste. Thank you. So let's all take a deep breath.